Oh, what a day! What a lovely day! Welcome to Flat Earth Debate Uncut. I'm your host, Nathan Oakley, and if you are new to this, my second channel, which is just called Nathan Oakley, then be sure to subscribe and hit the bell notification icon to keep up to date with the Flat Earth Debate pre-show, after show, and all the uncut goodness. If you'd like to support this channel, there's also a super chat that runs alongside each of these shows while they premiere, and there's also a link to PayPal in the info box below this video once it has aired. Now I'm joined by Anthony Riley, although he has vanished off to get a cup of tea, so I may not get any conversation in the meantime, but we shall see. Hopefully so. Are you actually there, Anthony? Here's where we find out he isn't. Nope, he's disappeared. But that's all good. We will have him momentarily. Unfortunately for me, I was setting up this show while Anthony was, I think, debating with Miles Davis on his channel, live streaming to about 100 people. Um, but as I say, unfortunately, I wasn't actually able to watch as I was setting up for this show, which is always the way it goes. Arwen also does the Early Bird Show, which is also streaming now for the next 20 minutes. It's been on for the last 40 minutes or so. And uh, yeah, I can't generally tune in. I tried to. It's just very time-consuming and all-encompassing. While he's doing it and I'm trying to set up for my show, so that's one of those. But uh Hopefully Anthony will tell me how he got on with Miles when he comes back with his brew. In fact, while he's doing that, I'm going to do the same. So you'll hear a lot of, Nathan, you there? While I go and turn my machine on. I have shared the link so other people may may well join. <laughs> I just smacked, smacked Miles Davis' ass. <laughs> Miles You back? It's going to be the most riveting pre-show there's ever been <clears throat> in the Nathan Oakley audience. Well, to be honest, while they're all there in the early there. bird show, that's what we can talk now if you're free. I can't hear you. You're like, are you in the, are you in the bog? No, no. Let me just make sure what microphone I've got. Hang on. Yeah, I'm making real, coffee anyway. <laughs> it's one of those, when this premieres, There'll probably be, I don't know, five people watching for the first five or ten minutes. So, yeah, there'll be people watching this, but that's how it is. Well, it's, it's the uncut uh, bit, you know. What do you want? I make a cup of coffee. You make a cup of coffee. Then someone else comes, usually Arwin, but he's doing the early bed. Well, that's okay. Well, I mean, I'm here to talk now. I've got me brew. I can tell you the gist of what happened with Miles. Excellent. Oh, here he is, Meekin. Hi, you guys. Sorry. I thought you were I'm... ill. Yeah, I know, but, you know, when a friend's in need... Oh, I'm not in need. And oh, Miles nice. is the one in need, but he's no friend. No, I just want to get... I, I heard something about I'm a liar. I, I, I missed that bit, so I just thought I'd... Well, he, he said that you were being dishonest. and his, his basis for doing it, and I, I might be wrong, but his basis for doing it is probably wrong. Um, he was saying that when you're doing the angular size calculations of the mountains, you're getting the base of the mountains wrong. And I said, I don't think he was... I didn't say this, and I should have done at the time, but I don't think you were, measure, you were measuring it based on the picture. You were calculating it off the picture, like not on the picture. You yeah, were calculating you it off. There's, there's, as you guys were saying earlier, there's, there's nothing scalable in the picture to, to allow you to do that. Um, so the calculations I did were taken solely from the data 
that Miles provided from the distance and the height. Um, and, and the purpose was to show the relative rank orderings. It wasn't to get uh, accuracy in correlation to the picture because that's an impossibility because you can't draw any numbers from the picture. But what you can do is a, a visual rank ordering. Yeah. Um, so that was the purpose of using that data and then to compare it comparatively to where the peaks would look if you plot them on a ball and how that ang uh, distance and relative curvature affects their relative heights. So, um, and, and that, that's, that's part one of analyzing the photo. You've then got to take into account all Zach's stuff, but the data that I did with just angular resolution uh, and the rank, uh, uh, sorry, angular size and the rank ordering is sufficient to demonstrate that the ball stuff does not correlate to the object and how yeah. it would lay out. That's the purpose. I think what what if you're up for it and you're not full of lurgy enough, but whatever. But what you should do is reassert your position because you want. I think that our listeners are more aware of this issue than what he is. I think it's him being ignorant. Um, but re restate your position like you just done. Uh, basically, make it sound like easy to understand and just say I wasn't measuring the picture because you weren't you were calculating it bit and then ranking it based based on yeah. um, the mathematics rather than doing it on the picture so I think he's misunderstood your your what your work was by his own ignorance because he claimed that he only skimmed through it so but then he said that you were being dishonest and I was like get out of it I, I made a point of making him retract it and you know like when you say sorry like but you don't actually say sorry you do yeah. everything but say sorry <laughs> Yeah. Well, he basically did everything but retract it. He was very grovelly, but and I said, "Look, if you don't retract it, I'm out of here." And he said, "That's done." I was like, "But you haven't said you've retracted it, though, have you?" So I dwelled well, the point long enough to make him look like a dick. But it's, look, it's it's maths based on 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 his data. So you know, it's applied angular resolution effects to his data. Now, if that's dishonest, then I don't know how how or why it's dis dishonest is the accusation of it, it's dishonest without any qualifications pointless isn't it uh, well, if he's got a point with the maths that wants addressing then we could look at it but if he's saying it's dishonest that's nonsense he could say it's wrong and point out why it's wrong and i'll be happy to listen but what we call a hand wave dismissal yeah that's what i said he did But yeah, if he wants to do that. But you're recording this bit anyway, aren't you, Nathan? So hopefully I'll I'll drop guys because honestly I feel like shit. So um if we can just make the point that you know, all, all I did was take his crude data. Okay, which is which is data which is applicable to a flat plane. The observational heights are just like now Miles's diagram uh, which was on a flat plane as well um, now we then applied the angular resolution uh, angular size calculations to that and that then gives you the relative ranking of how this how the peaks should appear when viewed across a, a flat plane now miles is saying it's a ball so if you're going to do that you put those peaks onto a ball um, and in doing so, it does cause a relative height reduction for those peaks the further away they are. Hello. If you then, the once you've calculated that, apply the same um, angular size calculations to the new relative heights if viewed on a ball, it, the maths well, generally in the morning, shows that there is a different... He's been pottering around. No, all about me, mute. Mainly, but he works on the phone as well. But yeah, after that... Finally, mute. <laughs> Cheers. Bye bye. bye bye. Sorry, I was just answering for. <laughs> oh, weird. <laughs> oh, you can hear it. Yeah, all of it. I'll say, sure up and mute. Oh, um, I didn't realise. I thought I had muted. Maybe the mute wasn't working. Hang on, let me just test this. If I mute now, hang on. Right, I'm muted now. Can you hear me? Yeah. Right. Well, why is that not manually muting? <laughs> I didn't want to take that call. Don't phone Geo Strava. Yeah, I don't know why um, that didn't work. Anyway, I did say to you earlier, you sound like you're in the bog. It's because you're on the wrong mic, and when you're muting the correct mic, 
or what you think is the correct mic. It's it's the right mic that you should be using. You're actually muting a mic that's not playing. So your presumably your uh, Brio mic is the one that's picking you up because it's not awful. And the Brio mics, considering it's a webcam mic, isn't horrendous. Is that any better? Miles better, yes. Thank God. Ah, I was I was on the wrong mic, even though I checked it and I thought it was right. I still made the mistake. That must make me a liar, according to Miles. But yeah, Miles won't accept that even if there was a mistake made on Adam's part. And I'll be honest, I was only listening because I was I was driving back from college. Um, I don't I didn't see what was going on, but I, I, I'm I'm pretty certain that the, even if there was a mistake, that doesn't make it dishonest. But Miles is like. Um, Sean and if there's any mistake they class that as a lie so it's like that's why I was laboring the point with him about what's actually a mistake compared to if it is a mistake compared to dishonestly and trying to deceive somebody because Adam's like one of the most sincere people I know I mean I'm, I'm sure he's not perfect I'm sure his shit stinks at times but point is that he's generally <laughs> I'm sure he's generally my point is that he's genuinely like you know a sincere kind of guy so I just dismissed it and I was ready for oh, walking there like my sincerity as a person is kind of irrelevant. I applied the angular size calculator to the data, um, and that is a consideration you have to take into account when doing a, a viewing function. Absolutely. Yeah. Did uh, you did you catch the conversation between Rumpus and myself recently? Yes, yes, where he... Uh, misrepresented what he'd been doing with the Isle of Man stuff. Correct, but he, he said, you've got to do a perspective translation. You don't understand how to translate 3D to 2D. And then I was like, well, when when did you do that with the Isle of Man? It's like, you don't need to. We're getting absolute sizes. It's like, no, we're not. We're absolutely comparing photography to what you say is what we should see on a ball. But the maths doesn't give you that. It doesn't perform viewing functionality, as Rumpus phrases it. Well, no. So... How do you make it perform viewing functionality? Will you add the perspective? Yes, we're allowing them to beg the question, assume you're on a sphere with a given radius and hijack perspective in the first place to give you these effects. However, if you just add that one simple step of adding in the reality of perspective, which is absolutely captured by a camera, oh, it all falls apart, so suddenly we're dishonest. No, you've just got a bullshit ball model. Just, just doesn't work. <laughs> you know, it's hijack reality, perspective, called it ball. And now we're saying, well, it doesn't include perspective. Oh, it doesn't need to. It's not performing viewing functionality. Yeah, but well, my camera is, and that's what you're comparing it to. So let's add a bit of perspective. Oh, it all goes to shit. What a shock. You don't live on a ball. Uh, so I think I think you're right. I, I think if that's the dishonesty then that is levelling, that in some way I don't think you have to do that to analyse a photograph. Um and I can only I can only reiterate that I do think you have to do that on a on a photograph. Whether I'm right or wrong, I suspect I'm right. But um, are you wrong? You it's don't kind need of irrelevant to, do anything. You don't need to, do anything like to that. my honesty and integrity on 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 the analysis. So you don't need to do anything like that, Adam. But if you are forced to beg the question, assume you're standing on a sphere, and then go to their curve calcs, then I think it's only reasonable that you include that step if you're forced to be in that position. You don't need to analyse anything. You just look at it and there's the stuff in it and what's to assess how far away it is. Well, it's this far away. But anything that's beyond a certain distance, oh, no, no, it's a phenomena all of a sudden. We need to analyse it. Well, really? Why? Well, because it's suddenly a phenomena because we shouldn't see it. Well, who says we shouldn't see it? The model we're going to use to analyse it with. Well, aren't we going to be using that to analyse it? Yeah, but that model says we shouldn't see this stuff. Look, check out my model. Well, your model doesn't include perspective, so we're going to include it. No, you're dishonest. What? Yeah. <clears throat> I mean, the other thing, I don't know what you think, Adam, but the, the fact that those three bridges line up basically in a line behind each other, looking, bear in mind he's supposed to be looking um, down on the bridges we should not see them lined up perfectly behind each other because the one that's in the foreground should be a little bit higher than the one in the background. They should yeah, be like that was uh, that was the bit I caught really at the end there, mate. And uh, it was a point he conceded, but then uh, said, "Yeah, you're right," but, but moved on um, quickly and didn't really respect the consequences of that. Yeah, because he called it eight that's inches the for the for the mile, yeah. didn't he? And I said, yeah. "No, it's the accumulated of the 29th to the 30th yeah. mile." 
I think it's 1.6 miles or 1.7 miles between the two. Sorry to interrupt. Did you say he conceded? He clearly and verbally conceded that point. He Mm. conceded that the difference should be 40 foot, yeah, um, but then moved on. Like I say, didn't didn't then... uh, What he said was... what he said was you can't tell because you can't tell where the 40 foot is and i'm like it's not there that's my point but he was saying that it was obstructed by the first bridge and you couldn't see because if the 40 foot was there it's been obstructed by the bridge the first bridge and i'm like well no it's not there 40 foot's the size, the size of a two a two-story building you would see the difference between that if you can see the road the layer of the road so if you can see the depth of the road then you should be able to see a two-story house difference between the two the first one and the third one, and they fucking line up dead straight, and I'm like, fucking hell. Can you bring, can you bring the picture up? Yeah. I think it's one of the strongest points myself, personally. The... Can you see the that? Trouble... I mean, you, you can see this bottom one here. Can you see the bottom line? You see, there's, there's, there's so many... It, the, to analyse a photo like this, it's mathematically it's exceptionally difficult because if you look at the maths that even what we've used it's incorrect when you calculate the curvature because what you do when you use those calculators is is it calculates the horizon at different distances for each one but that photograph is only relevant to one of those angles down does that make sense so actually what you have to then do is recalculate from that angle down the lines of sight to the other peaks uh, based on that angle down, not on the curve calculator angle down for, e- for each individual one because it isn't six or seven different pictures of each peak. It's one picture at one angle. So that skews his stuff even more because it, on a ball that would really create an even bigger hump some of the further away peaks if it's angled towards the horizon of the nearer ones on a ball i mean it's not and that's the point when you look at the picture you can see the peaks are relative they're not skewed as they would be uh, i also said that he did exaggerated his claim and that he said that they were like greater than 500 feet and that's the peak of the highest possible that he could possibly see can you, can but when you, you like what his point is is that you're lining up the bridge that's that vertical of the bridge with the horizon and when you do that you see that that horizon at best is 400 meters but is most likely to be 300 meters and if it is 300 meters that's significantly different from 500 plus can you bring and up the picture it, of it anthony just while you're talking about it say that again can you bring up the picture of it yeah. also not to be a pain in the ass but have you got the back chat not yet no we're not public are we no no not for another five minutes but no i'll i'll, I'll, I'll have the back chat don't worry Okay. Well, my, my point was that, like, that's the peak of the top part, and then it drops down to there. But my part was that, the, see these turbines here? We can use them turbines to identify this land that's here. And basically, it's the, it's the hill next to them in the background. But the problem with that is that, um, the, basically, the, t- the, the hills, these two, are 350 feet, uh, 350 meters. And this one's, at best, 400, most likely to be 300. But look at its claim. Height of hills three five hundred, but he's saying that the bridge tower height is two hundred and ten, and his his claim is the parallax um, perspective argument over these two values, and he's talking about these these two here. So what his claim is is the five hundred meters is probably relating to either that peak over there or that peak there, but he's actually comparing it to the peak that's in the middle, you know, this behind the stanchion. But that makes that point <laughs> then exaggerated for effect, and it's like well. And he said, no, that's not exaggerated. The hills are greater than 500 meters. I said, yeah, possibly the ones that are not relevant to the picture. But the ones that we're comparing is the ones that's the stanchion relative to the land behind it. And we can identify that as 300 feet, 300 meters. I said, so that's, that is exaggeration. It, it reads as though it's misleading people. And he's like, not, that, not only if you're stupid. And I said, no, it, it's a matter of fact that it is misleading people. I said, that's, that's, I didn't say dishonest, but I said it is misleading people. Oh, what a shock. Miles the Liar Davis lives up to his name with his misrepresentations and deception. Wow. I'm shocked. It is, it is misleading. It is misrepresentation. He doesn't accept it, but it is. What he should be saying is that the mountain behind is 300 feet or maybe 400. I mean, I wouldn't really decry him the 400, 
but it's realistically the 300 feet one because he's not seeing far enough for it to be the 400 feet one. And if it was the 400 feet one, you would see that layer depth between the two. You'd see like one different tone and color, like that, like what we see there. We're not seeing that there. It might be because the cables are obstructing it. But in any event, you can't make the assertion unless you can prove it's true. So you've got to go with the more conservative one because you can't prove the less conservative one. Yeah. Did you time down on the actual height of the observation at all? I just accepted the 210. I mean, I think that's still that's, there, Adam. That's that's a crucial, crucial thing. The as he as he said in some of the chat uh, earlier about trying to just get a level transit, it's almost impossible. And the pretense that just because he's got these matching heights, that in some way he's achieved a level transit between the camera and the tops of the bridge is just farcical. And even a one centimetre difference when applied to the bridge and then extrapolated again another 45 kilometres out is going to make a huge difference to the viewing angle uh, in relation to that. So his whole premise that it's based on those cans lined up is it's a nigh on impossibility to achieve that over the distances he's done. Certainly by eye, do you know what I mean? You'd have to have a level laser doing it to, to have any validity to his bit of perspective um, law that he's, he's quoting uh, to apply it to his observation. It's, it's just got no accuracy to, to draw that conclusion. Welcome to Flat Earth Debate. I'm your host, Nathan Oakley, and if you are new to this channel, or you've not done so already, be sure to subscribe and hit the bell notification icon to keep up to date with the Flat Earth Debate. If you'd like to support this channel, there is a super chat that runs alongside each of these shows while they're live, and there's also a PayPal link in the info box below the video. But most importantly, if you would like to join the discussion, simply mute the page you are currently watching, then click the link in the info box below this video to join the panel and express your views on the shape of the earth. If you do join, please don't swear. If you do, you'll be ejected, and if you are, please don't try to rejoin the stream using sock accounts. You'll be warmly welcomed back on the next stream. Please also share the show. Sharing the show obviously increases the live audience, but this in turn increases the chances of a more diverse panel. So please share the show on Facebook and Twitter. And one last time, if you're new to the channel or you've not done so already, be sure to subscribe and hit the bell notification icon to keep up to date with the Flat Earth debate. Now we are joined by Flat Earth Vegan Goy, Iron Rail Media and Sleeping Warrior, otherwise known as Adam and Good morning. Hello, hello. <laughs> Yo, yo. Afternoon. Hello. Any signs of curvature, gentlemen? No. Definitely not near Miles the Liar Davis. Hello. How are you doing? Who's that? That's uh, Travis, isn't it? Hey, Travis. Can't hear you, but good, good stuff anyway. So, yeah, straight on to curvature then. So, apparently, some hills or bridges obstructing other hills or bridges or lining up with them in some strange way proves that the Earth is curved, right? Um, yeah, um, basically I was free and, um, he was free and I was, I was happy to talk to him and just kill a bit of time before your show. And, um, I thought it'll be done within an hour. And basically I, I presented numerous issues that I had with him or rather with his observation. Um, but the first one I had to address was why it was that he referred to Adam Meakin as dishonest. Cause I felt that even if Adam perhaps might've made a mistake, he has to be intentionally trying to deceive somebody to be dishonest. And Miles tried to reassert his position by saying that he might not be dishonest himself, but his argument is dishonest. And I'm like, well, that still requires the guilty mind of trying to deceive people. And he wouldn't have it. So in the end, ultimately, I squeezed like the weakest possible retraction out of him you could ever imagine just to be able to move on the point. But I don't accept that Adam is dishonest or being dishonest because I don't think it's subject to his person. I think the point he makes is the point that's either right or wrong. 
And if, if, if you can demonstrate that it's wrong, then, you know, go ahead, be, be my guest. But to claim that it's dishonest is it's, it's a point that the point that was being made is devoid of the person. It's to do with the point being made. And I think Adam's bloody right. I think that the angular size is an issue because, I mean, Adam, do you want to tell us how you actually, what you actually did with that angular size calculator? Because he, he criticized you for comparing it to the picture by getting the base of the, the, the mountains in the wrong place. Hey, Owen. The way, hello. The way I understood it was that you didn't even use the base of the thing. You calculated its angular size without reference to the picture in the first place. Yeah. I, um, I did I did say this, so maybe it just needed a bit of clarity. So the, the purpose of me <coughs> doing the rankings was that you can't really extrapolate any real numbers out of the picture. It's, it, it, it's too difficult. But what we could do is visually rank in the picture so that was the method to compare the two models and how they work um, so what I did in terms of the angular size was to just take Miles's data that he quoted of distance and height to produce the 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 angular size figures um, and they are exactly what they are, are. <laughs> do you know what I mean they are calculated on the data he provided now the other thing I did was then do the calculations based on the topography of it or the, the, the geometry of it if those heights uh, or peaks were distributed not on a flat plane but on a ball um, and that obviously has a consequence to uh, their relative heights I, I did those adjustments, as you could see, and then did the angular size calculations again. Now, that seems the correct methodology for what he was doing. Um, the only criticism I can see is that he thinks that you shouldn't take into account that things get smaller when viewing. Outrageous. Uh, so, <laughs> it's, it's, you know, I mean, that, that, that's, that would seem the the point of contention that he's questioning whether when what, using whether a photograph, or not perspective's which real. is an observation, whether you, you apply... His, his question is whether or not perspective's real. That's basically yes. what you're saying. I don't care how you boil it down. That's no, 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 no. Let's be, let's be clear. What he's saying is that when you were doing your calculations, your angular size calculations, his position is that you misidentified the base of the mountain. Now, I don't believe that you actually identified the base of the mountain at all. No. No, the, the, the angular size calculations were taken from the data that Miles calculated. Morning, gentlemen. That's right, yeah. Hey, but they weren't, they weren't identified on the picture as the base, which is what his complaint against you was that he asserted was dishonest. And I, 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 I had to correct him with that and retract that point. But I don't think he understands that you didn't do what he says you did. No, there isn't a mathematical comparison between the angular size data and the image itself. The, the comparison is the rank order comparison, which is the only uh, practical way of, of doing it, certainly for, for, for that image that I could see. So it, it was the only way to take the relevant data, which does take into account the fact that things get smaller as they go into the distance. Um, so that was the only way. Now, if Miles has got a better way that he thinks of mathematically doing stuff, that's fine. I, I I would listen to that criticism, but I would have to disagree with his criticism if he thinks that you shouldn't, when analysing a photograph, take into account that things get smaller in the distance. I mean, that just seems a nonsensical argument. Well, his position is that he did take that into account when he did the Walter Bistlin curve calculator. And I said, well, what's the angular size of the mountain? And he said, there you have it on screen. And I was like, yeah, but what's its angular size? He said, you're looking at it. And I was like, yeah, I'm looking at a representation of, I want to know what its actual size is, the calculation for it. Can you demonstrate it? And he couldn't do it, but he wouldn't accept that it was a failing because he said that it was demonstrated visually. Which hey, is hold a on a second, Anthony. Hey, UKPI, how are you doing? Good to have you. Hello. Hello. Oh, did somebody get sniped? Do we need to get rid of him? Speak oh. up now. Oh. oh, I can I can join now. Can I? Hey, is that Dan? Dan Winfield? You can Hello? join anytime, sir. 
if there's a gap? Uh, I've I've tried several several times. I just watched you on the Miles Davies thing. Oh yeah. And <laughs> I thought it was quite amusing. Okay. I thought you got kind of trashed big time. Really? Oh, any particular reason? Have you got anything to justify that perception? Any particular reason? Because I come from uh, that neck of the woods, so I know exactly what and where Miles was when he took that uh, video. Okay, but how does that how does that affect uh, the perception of being trashed? I, um, because you you talked about there being a mile between the bridges. Each bridge? No, that's not what I said. It, it is exactly what you said. I said uh, there's a mile. So that, you should, so that you should have seen the curve. And uh, no, no, there is 0.9 miles. Yeah, there's South, a mile between the South fields. Queensferry is only about a mile long. Yeah, well, that's and what all, Anthony said, wasn't and, it? It was between 30 and, all and three, 40. And all three, and all three bridges or within that very, very small town. The very, so, very first bridge, the, the first bridge that you see is a, a huge metal structure, which is the, the rail bridge, but it's quite a narrow structure and formed in a completely different way to hey, the two it. other road bridges Hello. which were behind. So what 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 Riley was saying was you should be able to see um, kind of the bottom of each um, bridge, and that's just so not true. Well, I demonstrated it using a, a round mile on the curvature calculator, and it said that it was there was a difference of accumulated curve over the twenty ninth to the thirtieth mile of forty feet, and you we should using, see that. You were using Google Earth which brings was... into account the curvature which you seem to disbelieve so why were you using google earth no you, you've mistaken i wasn't using google earth for this point i was using the point i was making was that if the photograph is taken on a round sphere then the three bridges at the distance of 29 to 30 miles should have an accumulated curve difference of 40 feet and we don't so see you're... evidence of that in the picture so you're saying you weren't using Google Earth to mention a turbine and this, that, and the other? Well, are we jumping topics now, or are we getting closure on the point you were making about the bridges? <laughs> I'm I'm bringing them all together in the one. Let, let's do. Let's not do it with one a sneeze. Place. Let's not do it with a sneeze. Let's do it with systematic, um, like working our way through the procedure. Right. Your first point is that the bridges were misrepresented. And I demonstrated that between the 29th and the 30th mile, there should be at least 40 feet of curvature, but the photograph doesn't show any evidence of any curvature. How was that wrong? Bet bet between the bridges, it's um, just under a mile. Right. So I used a mile. What's wrong with that? Oh, so there's going to be curve between uh, in, in that mile, is there? Between the 29th mile and the 30th mile, it's... There's, there's, there's going to be curve between the, the three bridges. Yes. Yeah, I think... When, it, they're it, only a, when they're only a mile apart, but you're going to see that curve. It's not the first mile, it's the accumulation of the curvature between the 29th mile and the 30th mile. Hold on, can I just get a bit of clarity? So, are you suggesting that because there's 0.9 of a mile, and Anthony used a mile, are you quibbling over this 500 feet between the bridges in terms of the accumulated well, let's drop. Not, well, let's not just... I won't quibble about that, no. But that was... Um, but let's was just that not call what you, it a mile. Sorry, I, I didn't do know... Do we see were, the curve? Do uh, we just see let me get to the end of, of my point. Sorry, bear in, with me. Sorry, you don't need to talk mile. all over me. I hadn't quite finished talking. So the only reason I know that they're 0.9 of a mile is because you brought it up. I didn't know that till you said it. So you're now saying, well, I'm not quibbling about it. Is it because this minor difference between 29 and 30 miles and 29 and 29.9 .9 miles isn't actually really worth worrying about at all? Well, no, let's just call it a mile. 
Well, that's what he did do, and you quibbled about it. That's my point. What Riley was um, implying during during that conversation was there was a mile between each bridge. But actually, there's less than a mile between the three bridges. I see. Did you? Were you under the impression there was a mile between each bridge, Anthony? Do you want to present my screen? Sure. So, what's difficult with this this claim that he's making of against me is that the bridges are not parallel; they're on an angle. So, am I presenting now, Nath? Yeah, I you can't are, yeah. see anything. You'll have to press the, the the thumbprint at the bottom of the screen. All right. Can you now see it? Yeah. So if, you can see that at its worst, oops, at its worst, the difference, the distance between them is one point three miles. At its least, the distance between them is about one point seven of a mile. But we're talking about the middle of the bridge. So just as a rough approximation, without getting too technical or too like over critical, it's one point zero five miles. I don't really see the point. <laughs> There's that dog again. Um... I don't. I don't really see a point because you can argue semantics over the distance, but it's still about a mile, and that's what I demonstrated: the twenty ninth to the thirtieth mile. The whole that was your whole argument was the fact that you should actually see the curve in the bridge. Why? Why do? We, why do we see a four hundred foot mountain or hill, if you like, um, below the whole the below the stanchion? Yet I'm we still see that. It wasn't my whole point. You, again, you're mistaken. I brought up five points, four of which are itemized on screen, and I can't remember the fifth one. And this was just one of several points. So my whole argument didn't revolve around this. And if that's your perception, perhaps you didn't see the hangout or all of it. But but did, did Miles not debunk every single one? No. He hasn't considered collimation because he didn't know what collimation was before we spoke about it, and he dismissed it with a hand wave whilst we were doing the hangout. Miles' claim of 500 meters is exaggerated. It's about it's 300 to 400, and I'll give him the 400, but 400 to 500 is a significant difference. It's actually the 300, but uh, so what? I'll give him the 400, but it's still exaggerated, and it's misrepresenting the audience to think that there's a bigger disparity than what there actually is. But if you exaggerate your claim, generally speaking, that generally makes your claim fallacious. Um, the bridges don't line up on a ball, but they clearly line up in the picture. And there isn't an accurate linear relationship between the um, the effects of refraction with two objects over such a big distance, as I demonstrated. There was a fifth one as well, um, and I can't remember what it was now. I'll have to think to put it in there. But it wasn't all. He didn't bring up all. He didn't debunk any of these claims. He just hand wave dismissed them. I don't think it was the fact that he dismissed them. I think that you you talked over him when he was trying to explain the what. What you should be seeing is uh, quite a, a big hill above um, the stanchion of the bridge in the background. Yet Correct. what you were seeing was a 400 meter uh, bloody object lower than a 210. So let, let, let's be clear, right? Your claim was that didn't Miles debunk all of the points that you made? Well, he didn't even know about collimation and he hand wave dismissed it. That's not debunking. That's just disagreeing with no evidence. Yeah, to yeah, well, yeah. But you you did you did go on to talk about theodolites and the sort. That's the collimation point. Uh, yeah, and and that, not that understanding was not, not understanding that theodolites actually do um angles and not levels um you'll need a dummy level to get a level for that yeah but in you, civil you, engineering you, you, you don't use a theodolite you've misunderstood my point about collimation and he did not respond he does not have any evidence to support the perception that it has no effect so that's not debunked Moving but what, to the... well okay 
Moving to the second point, he claims that the mountains are in excess of 500 metres, but they're actually three, maybe four, but not five. Now, that is an exaggeration. No, the, no, the tallest one was, I think, 510, 520, I think. Yeah, but that's not the one that's behind the stanchion of the bridge, which is what we're referencing. So that is exaggeration. He didn't debunk that. In, uh, all the hills in the background um yeah but we're not talking about all of the hills we're talking each, about the... each one each one is at different heights well you can take a take a line right across and you'll see the the larger ones compared to the smaller ones the one directly where you're talking about um which yeah, is his claim might have been 400 might have been 400 but well, the it was, tallest it was... one was over 500 yeah, but we're not talking about the tallest one. We're talking about the one relative to this stanchion that he identifies in his video, but he's claiming it's 500 plus meters, but it's it's either three or four. I'll give him four just for the sake of moving on. It's definitely not five. Now, the problem is that makes it an exaggeration and a, mis a misrepresentation, and he didn't debunk that. You used uh, Google Earth to basically show you exactly the, the peaks of each hill so you should know that one of them was by far over 500 meters that's not and true the low and hang the on. lowest one yeah, hang on stop yeah uh, let me just Ant Antony, just uh, mate i'm gonna do one because i feel like shit um Antony, yeah cheers for uh defending my honor sir or at least my integrity i appreciate that it's uh it's a weak argument but i, I cheers for standing up for that mate i, I do I do appreciate it. Um, I'll catch up with you guys later, and uh, I'm going to do a little bit of uh, further stats on that data, just do some rank correlation coefficients to just kind of exemplify the point of how skewed the observation is to what it should be on a ball in terms of the effect of relative distance on curvature. I'll, I'll try and get it done the next day or so, mate. But uh, cool. take it easy, guys. All right, Ruff. Ladies. Thanks, Adam. Later. Thanks a million. All right. So with regards to your claim that the mountains are actually um, 500, let's just address that. Because I did, I did go through this on Miles' Hangout. So I'm assuming that you didn't actually pay attention. The highest possible mountain along the line of sight that we're talking about is the highest possible is around about, zoom in a little bit so we can get it shown. As I move up and down here, you can see the height. He's not going to see any of these peak peaks here because they're too far away and, and they're of the same size. They're obstructed by this mountain. And that's only 347. And that's if you can see that one at all. So it's like, well, if you're going to say that in somehow these are 500 feet, I'll say no, they're not. The highest possible that you can He's, see is above 350. He, he, named, he named each peak. Yeah, and, on, I said that, uh, and I said that he's not seen that far. Going by peak finder. Yeah, going but, by peak finder. Yeah, going by, it doesn't mean he's seen that far. The highest he can see well, is three, the highest he can see is three hundred to four hundred feet, and he hasn't why been able can't to do that because he doesn't know how why deep. Why can't he see that far? Why can't he see that far? Atmospheric moisture, vapor, you know, Compact humidity, camera. pollution. I think he, uh, I think he did this over a two-day period, didn't he? Uh, I'm sure he said that that he tried it over several days and uh, got a great. I mean, it is some distance from Traprain Law to the bridges, let alone to the background. That's right. That is a massive, massive difference. Well, it's thirty miles, and it's the same distance as my Hoy Lake to Blackpool Tower observation, which wasn't behind the curve of the Earth. So I'm familiar with the distance. Hey, right. Well, uh, and and he proved that the the hills went behind something that is so much smaller, two hundred and ten to the top of the the crossing bridge. Right. But the point is that he's claiming that the land at the back on the horizon is plus greater than 500. He says that he's referring to some other mountains that are not relevant. But his claim is that the vertical part of the, the bridge is 210 meters. The height of the hills is greater than 500, which is at its absolute peak, 
But the problem is when he's referencing the, the stanchion, he's referencing the land behind it, and that's what his comparison is to. Now, this land behind it, according to what Google Earth reliably tells us, apparently, is no higher than 350 meters. But the problem is, if that's 350 meters behind, and this is 210, it isn't greater than 500 meters, which is the way he represents his claim. And that isn't the one on your, That's the, the one on your left. The one on your left-hand side, the highest one on your left-hand side, if you pull back to the um, his, uh, Miles' actual uh, photograph, the one on the left-hand side is over 500. Sorry, we're back to the beginning. Yeah. We've just gone through this twice. I mean, my patience is wearing a bit thin for it. He's already explained twice. That's not the hill he is referencing. Who cares what the other hill is? That's not the one yeah. he's using to represent his argument so with. Just, so you're just going to pick and choose hills? Oh, sorry. No. He's representing you're not, you're not the difference. You're now talking over me. Height. Listen, he's made it twice. I'm now making this point a third time for you. So what's the issue? He's not referencing the hill on the far left, is he? What, what he's doing is exaggerating the overall height of the biggest possible hill to somehow represent the claim that he is making, which the bridge, the stanchion of the bridge, is somehow too big or too small relative to the thing, the map, the land behind it. But the problem is he's put that number in there, referencing this claim. But actually he's referencing the mountain over here somewhere, which has got nothing to do with the claim he's making. So, yeah, you can argue for him that the, there is a mountain there at some distance of around about that height. But the claim is to do with this stanchion and the height of the horizon. So wherever you pick this, you're not going to be able to argue that the height of the horizon over there is relative to the height that's behind it because that's the line of sight that he's using as his reference. That's, that's my the, point. It's exactly uh, Anyway, Anthony, that's the fourth time this point's been made. So I'm happy to move on regardless of UKPI's decision to distract and defend this misrepresentation, yeah. which is what it is. So on the final point that I made was that there's not a linear relationship between the effects of the atmosphere the way he thinks there is. So just because you can draw a straight line through the top of this to the, the horizon there, I, sh I demonstrated that Skunk Bay, that the, the thing in the middle ground and the thing in the background are independent of each other, and he didn't accept it. So I then presented Soundly's work, which showed the same thing, and he doesn't want to accept that either. But that doesn't make it not that doesn't make it debunked. So going back to your original assertion that Miles smacked my ass or whatever it was that he said... He hasn't debunked any of these points. He's just hand waved, dismissed them, and disagreed. Well, he's entitled to do that, but that doesn't make it debunked. Debunked means proved wrong, and he hasn't done that. He's just dismissed it. Well, that's okay. He can do that. That's the whole point of what he's going to try and defend his position. But for you to assert that I got my ass kicked and then come on and try and rehab the hangout, I'm not being funny, but you're going to get your ass kicked easily because I've just had the hangout and I know what I'm talking about. 30 miles is not that far. It's quite a distance. No, do you want me to show you what 30 miles is in real world? I'll show you a 30 miles that's completely inconsistent with this. Are you, going to show me on Google, are you going to show me on Google Earth? No. Because that takes into account the curve, which you keep on using. Here's, here's an observation. Sorry, I Sorry, hold on. Um, Let's just stick to that. That was another point he made before you move on. Yes, fine, Anthony. I'll stick it up on screen for the audience. So this is, the, this is a, another 30-mile observation and it's supposed to be a 510-foot tower, and it's supposed to be virtually completely gone by the curvature of the Earth. So this is 30 miles. It's the same distance as what the, um, the um, claim of miles is. But Mick West himself says that that's how much should be seen at 30 miles. So you're saying how far away these towers are and they're really far, these, these bridges. But actually, in the context, I've got direct evidence of the same distance, and that, that thing is what we actually see. And that's not the same as what we should be seeing. So if you're going to claim that the curvature of the Earth or, or, or that it's such a far distance and it's very impressive and that miles proved this or that, I'm going to say no, because even 30 miles away, this is only 400 feet tall, right? In terms of meters, that's what? Is it 160 or something like that, meters? So it's much smaller than the, t the bridges that he's looking at, and that's what it's supposed to be if we live on a sphere at 30 miles away. But that's what we actually see. And this light at the top, this light at the front here is on the uh, it's on the ballroom tower, which is like two stories high. But right, we also you. see the roller coaster on the promenade, and that's the light on top of the roller coaster, and that's the light on top of the mirror ball, which is only forty feet above the road. So if you're going to claim and that, what about the light below it? 
So the, the tower's about 120 metres, coincidentally the amount that Miles exaggerated the differential between these hills. What about the light that we can't see? What light that we can't see? Oh, here we go. Sorry. Right, so the distance isn't massive, and the differential represented by Miles was misrepresentative of the actual observation that he was using as an example. You've ne also got a second if issue, it would seem, with Google. So let's move on to your issue with Google. I don't have any issue with Google. You, but you seem to keep on using uh, Google Earth um, to debunk your own claim, really, which is a bit silly because Google uses the the globe and has a curve and you do, use Do you have a globe to... model that we hold can on, use? Hold you on, can hold on, hold on, Jose, can you let him finish? Can you let him finish? Why, why, do you keep on, why do you keep on doing that? Now, I, was, I don't I mean was, to seem just... disrespectful, let, let me but just... why do you keep on using the globe to try and make your point? I'm not making, I wasn't making any point. I was challenging the point that Miles was making, and I was saying that Miles was getting things wrong. Now, you think that Miles has debunked me at all stages. No, Miles hasn't debunked anything. Miles has just hand waved. Hold, hold on, Anthony. Let's not, you don't need to. Right. Okay. So his answer is he's not making any claims. He's debunking the assertions made by Miles Davis. Okay. Yep. So back to your original assertion that Miles has debunked all my points. He didn't debunk any of them. He just hand waved, dismissed them, and that's not the same thing. So I'll invite you to retract your comments and just leave because at this point you look like no. A... I look like a what? A dick. All right. Do you want to retract that your statement? I'm meant... Why would I do that? Because Miles didn't debunk anything. You asserted that Miles debunked all of my arguments, and he didn't. He hand waved, dismissed that, them, and didn't know the, about one of them. Is that, is that in the same way as you keep on using theodolites to? Oh, we're onto a new subject. Um, okay. To, to mention to, new subject. To bring some Why are we changing sort of the subject? Level. Why are you changing when... the subject? Why are you changing the subject? So you've come on and made some assertions. Obviously, for the person that finds those assertions oh, to be I'm incorrect, hadn't up. finished talking. So, for the person whose assertions you have tried to claim are incorrect, have now, for the second time, first time you watched and obviously didn't pay enough attention, now it's been demonstrated to you personally, and upon doing so, you want to change the subject to something else. I guess you've not, I uh, guess you've excuse not me. watched it. So, Nathan. Anthony has politely asked you, you while you talk all over oh. me because you're unbelievably rude, he's politely asked you to retract your bullshit comments that were incorrect. Not move on to theodolites. Uh, theodolites were mentioned during the. Yes, we can move on last... once you concede. The once point I concede. The point yeah. we're making here, the point we're talking about, is that your claim was that I got debunked on all my points. And I've just demonstrated to you that a hand wave dismissal was his position, and that's not debunking. Yes, and you tried to use civil engineering equipment. Oh, we're doing it again, are we? So, up. no, listen up. up. He wants you to retract your bullshit. He's annoyed. He's been very courteous. I'm getting annoyed on his behalf because you've made a load of statements that were wrong. He's then proven them to be wrong, and you want to move on to something else. So, that's and not I going to happen until you I go, oh, my that. bad. Yeah, I thought Miles had done a good job, when in fact he hadn't. He had hand wave dismissed them. I reasserted his crappy points that he gave a hand wave dismissal to, and I've now been shown to be incorrect as well. That's what we're waiting for. A polite gentleman would do so. It seems you're rude and would rather talk over me when I point this out and move on to a different subject, which we may well do once you concede. <laughs> You, you you ask for uh, people to give you evidence, and you decline when the evidence is. No, 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 no! Stop it! Your point was that I was debunked by Miles on all of my points that I made. 
I've just gone through them one by one with you and demonstrated that he didn't debunk any of them. He just dismissed them. That's not the same as debunking. And I'm asking you yeah. to acknowledge that and retract what you said or just leave because you are beginning to look like a dick. That's what yeah, I said. That's amongst those options, sir, is not move on to theadolites. It's be a man. Concede your nonsense and then we'll move on. Right, we'll just move on then. No, you'll concede, be a man. Now I'll give you a different option. You'll be a man and concede your nonsense, or I'll kick you out, because that isn't one of the options moving on until you concede, asshole. Uh, that's swearing, isn't it? Yeah, you're starting to test my patience. You've made a load yeah, of assertions. I... You just want to move on to another one, so we all forget about the nonsense you've come in and spewed. Well, we're not. We're not we tolerating it. To I haven't finished speaking. We're not tolerating it. He's politely asked you twice to retract your nonsense so we can move on. Why are you dragging this out? Why are you making yourself what? seem so pathetic? It seems sad that you can't what? just concede you're wrong. Right, Nathan. Politely ask me then. I, I have done. Numerous times. I'm asking Nathan to politely Why ask the you. hell would I ask you for anything? <laughs> I'm not the one you've come in and made a load of assertions about. Anthony has asked you twice. You're the one that keeps on harping on about um, do this, do that. I'm just saying move on. Yeah, and I'm saying you can't move on until such time as you retract your claim that uh, Miles, Miles the Liar Davis debunked all my points because that wasn't true. I realise that you've now left the group, but thank you very much for your stay in Hotel Nathan. Do come again. Take care now. Bye-bye then. These people are pathetic. Yep. It makes my blood boil. Why can't just they just concede? I was wrong. I said yeah. you'd got smashed. I should have read his comment from the chat. I just watched Anthony get his ass handed to him. Uh, right, okay. Well, I want to come on the panel, rub it in his face. Okay, here's the link. Just didn't know to refresh when the show starts. Then come in claiming that I couldn't give you the link. Again, assumptive asshole. No, the link goes out when the show goes live and you obviously tuned in before it was live and didn't refresh your page. So I had to tell you to refresh your page and then you got instantly in like a dick making your assertions that you were blocked or some shite. Wrong, just like you were wrong about Anthony. And it took us, how long has it been? About 30 minutes dragging you through it, kicking and screaming while you make the same nonsense assertions that Miles made. Because you're stupid and believe people like Miles in the face of evidence. Even when it's presented to you, you don't want to accept it and concede. You want to move on. Well, no, cognitive dissonance. Accept that you are incorrect. Miles has actually provided us with an exceptional flat earth proof. He keeps telling you morons that it's a globe proof and you keep believing him. Hence, Anthony has to dismantle your assertions in front of a couple of hundred people while you go, no, let's move on. Pathetic. Absolutely well, pathetic. I see you in my comments, UKPI. Now I know how pathetic you are. I'll be damn sure to point that out next time you comment. You're a pathetic individual. A man would have conceded. You are a mouse. Well, let's be clear as well that what they're doing actually is, although UKPI, you have never heard of, don't know him, never spoke to him, what he has to do is repackage the hangout that Miles had because he needs to try and make people think that in some way I had A, B or C. But the fact remains that there were numerous issues with Miles's claim, mainly exaggeration, that don't stack up. But if you come and repackage what was just uh, that we had the hangout about and try and make people think that in some way I was bum smacked, well, I'm not going to let you do that because I wasn't bum smacked. But you weren't man enough to admit that you might have that wrong. So it's either an intentional slur or you are a dick. It's one or the other. Yeah, he just wants to rattle his way through all his crap points until he gets a gotcha that he thinks he's won a point on. So he can labour that indefinitely. And every point that you've smashed it on, you'll just get, well, right, well, let's move on to the next one. Sod that, after two of them, it's like, no, well, why aren't you conceding? Why are you in the chat saying that you just watched Anthony have his ass handed to him? No, what you actually watched was a deceitful piece of crap called Miles the Liar Davis deceitfully weaseling his way around his deceptive gl globe, in quotes, proof, which it isn't. It's a flat earth proof.
But yeah. he assumed when he made his little video that we'd all forgotten about the fact that his calculator excludes perspective entirely. Not to mention the fact that it's hijacked perspective in the first place. Begs the question, assumes the radius. I, I, it just beggars belief that he's even done this. The person getting his ass handed to him is Miles. He's getting a proper good pasting. If you can't recognise that UK, UK PI, it is a demonstration of your low intelligence. Because Miles is getting creamed. I'm just gl grateful that he joined and I, w I had the time to respond to his point because by doing that, it demonstrates exactly what they've got to do at all costs. They've got to try and portray or, or, or proclaim that they had a victory and they definitely did not. Miles didn't know about collimation. The bridges can't line up. There's not a linear function or a linear relationship between the, the object in the foreground and the background. And there was a couple of points. I can't remember what they were now, but the point is he has to claim that this is a, a loss on my part, and it simply isn't. So th thanks for joining. We've just had the, the, the opportunity to smack your ass. So do come again. Now I'm going to smack it once more. Because the ultimate truth here is that at some stage or another, both Anthony and UKPI exp expressed what we should or should not see. And why should or shouldn't we see this? Oh, because the begging the question proof of nothing perspective hijacking curve calculator says we should or shouldn't see any of this nonsense. It's just begging the question and assuming your outcome. So telling me that an assum assumption of the radius of Earth plugged into a mathematical calculation dictates whether or not something's a bloody hologram is an outrage. Whether or not something should be physically positioned somewhere. Nonsense. Models are not reality. That, that's uh, happy Thanksgiving. Could everyone on the panel say one thing they're thankful for? PMAS. My family. Life in general. Flat, flat plane. No gravity. That's beautiful, man. Life. People don't respect it enough. People don't get out enough. I was watching JLB's video last night that he released, and he was explaining that a lot of people, hey Zender, won't get out enough. They literally sat in front of their computers all day, watching TV, moaning about how it's poison, and still consuming it. And I completely and totally agree. He also said, you know, one of the things he started doing a few years ago was going out and listening to podcasts whilst walking and getting some exercise and some sun. And it's like, he says it, and to me it's like, <laughs> obviously, you've got to get out of the house every day. Uh, people don't, and it shocks me. You know, people are seething in their own little stewing horribleness looking at a computer screen all day. You know, I, I can bear to do it for a few hours a day, but obviously I'm a YouTuber, I enjoy making videos, and I enjoy watching a video occasionally on YouTube. But on the whole, I'll go out to the park, I'll take my kid to a class... I'll go out and get sunshine. I'm not in the here all the time. But most people who are on the internet are consumed with it. They're on Facebook nine, ten times a day, checking in, checking statuses. You just think, wow, if you're obsessed with it, then it's unhealthy for you. I mean, his examples included food and various other things. But in terms of the poison that is taking in constant propaganda from TV and oh, just beggars belief that people do it all day long. Yeah, I don't even have a TV. Well, all you have to do is sacrifice your sanity. You can do it too, Nathan. Well, just get out of the house a bit, get some sunshine. Minimum hour a day, get out there. If it's pouring rain, obviously that's a different story. It isn't pouring rain most days. Even if it is, most people think, oh, it's raining, and you go out and it's not really that bad. I say that because I have to. Uh, I <laughs> Uh, say it, say uh, again, Zindi. Right now, it's okay. yeah. Yeah. Say again, Zindi. Um, sorry, I have really bad internet connection. So I'm here right now. It's always shining. I mean, in the winter, there's the sun shines and it's warm. In the summer, the same. So pretty nice. Um, but I think the next holiday it will be at a place where it's a little colder than you, Great Britain. You're still in Thailand, uh, Zinder? Yeah. Zinder, you're yeah, still in Thailand? They have really bad Wi-Fi. Yeah. 
they, they have really bad Wi-Fi here in Bangkok. Fair enough. Last time we, <laughs> last time we spoke. I hear, I hear like every second word you guys say. No, no, it's good. Your connection's not terrible for us. Um, last time we spoke, you said that you'd been out and spoken to a few people and said, what do you think about Flat Earth? And a few had given you indifferent looks. Some had been in, uh, in disgust with you. Uh, have you since been out and asked them what they thought about Globe Earth? Um, uh, no, I didn't get the chance to do it. So, But right now in Bangkok, I'm going to stay for a few more days and I can ask people about Globe Earth. Um, what they think about it. So I will have to find people uh, who can speak English uh, quite well enough to express their views. And uh, I think I will do so in terms of like going in a bar and start the conversation with people and then go on to Globe Earth. Not like, hey guys, what do you think about Globe Earth? Like with a microphone in the, in the hand, right? It doesn't work like that. Have you so, been yeah, to I'm any going the... to try. Have you been to any of the street uh, markets? Approach. Have you been to any of the nighttime street markets that they've got there? Yeah, I've already been on the, the nighttime street market. We have been on the walking streets in Pattaya, which uh, kind of astonished me how um, open they sell prostitution because it's even illegal, I heard, but people don't even look at it. The and there I could talk to some people, but I was too drunk to talk about Globe Earth. I didn't uh, even think about it. That's fair enough. I mean, the um, markets, yeah. and if you want to include it, the drugs and prostitution, it is, in the most literal sense, the black market. So when you're out there, you can yeah. like, see on the stalls. I haven't been, but I've seen videos about it where they show literally people picking up great big swords and things and all sorts of crazy weaponry that you can just buy on the street. You know, normally you'd be on, you know, underground internet to do it. It's crazy, I know. I mean, how openly they sell it, right? And everyone can see it. Like, they don't care. Because I think they gave enough money to the police so they could sell those things uh, without anybody looking. Um, yeah. Great. Love it. Actually but get to I see, see the black market. I mean, Touch and taste and smell the black market. <laughs> love it again please I said the black market taste. you get to touch it smell yeah. it taste it maybe even buy something <laughs> yeah it's <laughs> great I don't think uh, I I would be able to buy something from there I mean I still have to bring it back to Zurich right on the airport so depends what what weapons whether or not Otherwise, I'm going to have a problem. Um, I think, uh, in, uh, sorry to change the subject, but I think in future, uh, it's, I think it's much more fun to be a globe earther on this panel. So maybe I should behave like one in future. I mean, maybe I could well, even learn things. It's much more fun being a little kid on the average than it is being an adult. So, yeah. Yeah. I mean, <clears throat> because as a kid, you're not being shop. forced to live in reality. You can live in your own dream world. Yeah. Do you know this from personal experience, Arwen? Yes, I do. I think the point or the, the correlation is that you're indoctrinated with this stuff from birth. So all of your cartoons as you're growing up have got, at least at a subliminal level, the idea of the sphere earth and space and various other things to do with evolution dinosaurs especially all of that stuff is is given to you in a very impressionable part of your life and if you can indoctrinate kids at, at yet an early enough age with the idea of something that is fantastic just being benign and just as is that's just your reality then that'll stick with them for a long time so what zinder's kind of saying is it's it's much easier to regress to the fantastical sphere earth paradigm because it is that of your indoctrination. It is that of your childhood. I look back on my ideas of heliocentricity with great fondness. Because I remember playing with space toys and thinking about space. You know, it's cool. That's what I did when I was a kid. Yeah, um, I, I kind of meant um, on being a globe earther on this panel itself. It's much more fun because then you can like debate and like at each other and so on right 
because as a flat earther, you can discuss things, of course, but many times you are going to agree with each other, and at some point you need someone who kind of doesn't agree with you and kind of challenges the things you say. But, but Zinder, is that really fun, though? Is it fun to come in here and get your arguments pretty much destroyed every day? If you're a glober, you know what I mean? Like, you, you present the same arguments, and we all know how to destroy it. Like, uh, I don't see how that's fun for ballers. Yeah, you, don't, you don't destroy any arguments. That's a joke. You just see, buy this is, I've crazy. just took the words okay, out of my mouth. Okay, P's, okay, P's yeah. timing is excellent, because what... P took the words out of my mouth. I was going to say, all they can do is deny and obfuscate. So if there's ever a hint that the audience might get the impression that we're smashing it and they've never got any comeback and their rebuttals are debunked, then someone like P comes along and says, you don't have any arguments. You've never debunked anything. You've never shown yeah. us that this that this lighthouse on screen where P got kicked yesterday is... No, I visible. didn't. I uh, see, didn't because see, before if I've you can actually finished demonstrate the sentence, something... Before I've have even finished the sentence, let's shut him up with my rumpus button and say, this is where P got kicked yesterday. So P asserted yesterday that we had never shown that the sphere model has demonstrated something wasn't there. So there and then, just like UKPI, we took him through it, live in front of a couple of hundred people. And at the end, P just rumpused, didn't concede and say, oh yeah, I was wrong in my assertion that there's things that we see that we shouldn't see. He didn't do that. He Pro just rumpused. Prove it. He didn't prove it. Yeah, we did. You didn't. Sorry, if you can there, prove Anthony. that, I think there are people that would be interested Hold on in a second, it. P. You should go. You should Hold go on. talk Hold to on, them. Hold on, P, because you're now going to leave the audience with the impression that we didn't take you through it yesterday. You had to. You had to kick me because you lost the argument. We didn't lose the argument. You wouldn't you, concede. That's why you kicked me off the hangout. Yeah, because you wouldn't concede. You just lost. like no, you just you lost like, the argument because if you can actually demonstrate, you can see something that should be impossible to see see on a sphere. You should bring that information to someone who would care about that. I think a lot of people would be interested in that, Nathan. Yeah, but did. you can't you can't demonstrate it well, we because did. it's not true. No problem. And you, you, you lost the argument because you can't prove that you see something that you can't see on a sphere. You've never proven that. P, okay? are you no still problem. Hold on. Hold on, P. If you, P, if you can actually on, prove that, please shut up. Stop rumpusing the hangout. Right. No. Okay, P. No Did you problem. wake up sleep? You shut, you shut the fuck so, up. No, oh, oh, he wants to get kicked. So, P, I've paused uh, it on screen. We you're the asshole, Nathan. Are you going to cry oh, now? Oh, I see. So now the ad homs come. So what I was about to do, P, is exactly the same thing we did yesterday with you. Now, do you want to do that? We've got plenty of time on this show before I round out and ask everyone to subscribe to my second channel. So, should we do it again right now? I'm up for it if P is. Yeah, P. Gone very quiet. You can't. You can't prove that you can see something on a sphere that you shouldn't be able to see. You've okay. yet to demonstrate that. We know the you. assertion. We're asking if you want us to take you through it again, like we did yesterday, and you're denying our point. At the, the point that you did this, P, was where we were pointing out. The people don't concede, they either rumpus or they want to move on. But your assertion yesterday was that this lighthouse, yeah, which is what we took you through, couldn't be seen on a sphere because there's a 170 foot wall of water obscuring your view of it on a sphere. If you beg the question and ask a begging the question proof of nothing perspective hijacking curve calculator, how much should or shouldn't be seen? So if you beg the question, according to your model, you shouldn't see this lighthouse, P. We took you through it yesterday, P. Why did you rump us again and fail to concede even though we've already done it? So if you can actually demonstrate that, then go do it to someone okay, that let's understands do it. this right. stuff. Right, perfect. Thank you, P. Not, Let's do it again. I, I don't. You don't. I don't even understand what you're talking about. You're speaking a different language to me. Oh, okay. Do you know what a wall is? Well, that's an interesting question. 
It's not a philosophical question. How could question. one define it's a not wall? It's not philosophical. It's very literal. Do you know what a wall is? Have you heard about Plato's chicken? See, this is the kind of obfuscation that we're dealing with. Yeah? We've taken him through it. When we say, let's do it again then, P, because you're denying it and obfuscating, he asks me about Plato and when I try and put it in simple terms, having been told that I'm talking a different language. No, P. 170-foot wall obscuring your view of something else. That's what I'm talking about. Not being able to see over that wall in your model when you beg the question and ask a begging the question proof of nothing. Perspective hijacking curve calculator. How much of this lighthouse we should or shouldn't see? And the answer is none of it. There's a 170 foot foot wall in the way blocking your view of it. According to Nathan. your religious belief in a ball model that we don't Nathan. live on. Nathan. You're begging the question and also... You're accusing me of doing what you Sorry, do. What, which what is question am I begging? Mainstream Sorry. media I'm a, propaganda I don't understand. tactic. Don't understand. What and am I begging? What question am I begging, P? I don't think you I don't deny. That I policy. don't deny anything. What question am I begging? You said you're begging you, the question. You deny all the evidence, not me. Uh, you're just rumpusing so and throwing out nonsense. So the question you're begging is, you're, 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 you're assuming that this should not be seen. And you uh, it is seen, you moron. Can you not see it? It's Are called begging the question. And it's an Are you stupid? I'm not begging fallacy. the question. Hold on. Didn't Hands up on the panel that? who can't see it. Hands up. Fallacy. Hear you P, talk P, about it P all the you're time. a moron. Do I'm not begging the question. We do time. see it. Hello. But it's Hello? okay for you to beg Sorry. the question, Hello? but no one P, on your panel is allowed to beg the question. Hello. We do see it. It is there. I'm not begging any questions. Hands up who can't see it. Who can't see it? Anybody? Anybody at all? Uh, everyone can see it, you idiot. So, no questions being begged. The question that's begged is that there's a wall in the way, you muppet. You're, assu you're assuming that we shouldn't be able to see it. That's called no, begging no, no. the question. The model assumes your no, ball, you haven't, you haven't earth demonstrated model. Oh, you see, that. he doesn't like the that's clarification. The He's got a rumpus it. So, for the audience only, while P has a little conniption fit in the background. The ball model... If you believe you live on a model, the spherical heliocentric ball model, the one that we're here debating, says we shouldn't see this lighthouse. There's a wall in the way. Now, we've demonstrated that on multiple occasions, debated it on hundreds of debates. P, having had it concisely demonstrated it yesterday over the course of about 10 minutes, is now denying that fact and claiming that we're begging the question by just having a little look at it and just seeing it right there. No, P. The only thing that says we shouldn't see it is your stupid ball model for anybody that thinks they live on a globe. That's the only thing that begs any questions. That's the only thing that says we shouldn't see it. That's bollocks, though, because we do see it. There it is. You see it, Muppet? Can you see it? Because it shouldn't be there if you think you're on a ball, as we showed you yesterday. Maybe you can obfuscate it and tell us how we didn't demonstrate anything again. Nathan, I think what's actually happening is that Pete's rebrandishing what the position was yesterday in some way to try and either make you look bad or him look better. It's not about what he's arguing. It's about what he's basically the way he's trying to present things. He's packaging it up with gloss like cherries on top. And really, he got his ass kicked yesterday. Like uh, UKPI got his ass kicked before. But UKPI was doing the same thing, rebranding something that was basically Miles is doing a hand wave dismissal as like debunking me. Well, P's just basically doing the same thing. He got his ass kicked yesterday, but he's claiming that you were in some way wrong. But he's just re, re, um, re, repackaging what happened yesterday. That's all that's happening here. And with that, I'm going to say first and foremost, a huge, massive, enormous thank you to all of the debating panel for making this debate possible. And of course, a massive thank you to all of the live audience for tuning in and hopefully sharing this debate. If you want to catch the uncut show, be sure to tune in after the end of the next live show where my second channel, Nathan Oakley, will rebroadcast this stream along with the pre-show. So tune into that on Nathan Oakley channel. Link is in the info box. Once again, a massive thank you to all who tuned in and shared. I've been Nathan Oakley and I'll see you all in the next video. Oh, what a day! What a lovely day!